Hello students, in the previous lesson, the main part of the French Revolution has already been discussed. Rest of the sections we will be studying today is also the part of the revolution, the inside matter of women's status, slavery, and some other issues. Till now, we saw the middle class and common people fought for their right to equality, and they succeeded, got the position and also declared right for men. They had voting rights, formation of political clubs were allowed, and the leaders were all men. Role of women were barely seen in the whole story. But of course, they had their part and contributed in the revolution. So our next section is the question in itself. Did women have a revolution? Did they get equal opportunities as men? Let us see what was the scene of women during the revolution. In the very beginning of the lesson, we have discussed about the event that took place in Paris. People formed militia, where women also took part. They fought against the military troops sent by the king. They were active participants in many events which brought about so many important changes in French society. They had a hope that their contribution would pressurize the revolutionary government to bring them help in improvising their lives. We have also studied that when the men were away to fight the war, women used to take care of house and the family. They even worked to earn and make a living. They worked as laundresses, sold flowers, fruits and vegetables at the market or also were employed as domestic servants in the houses of prosperous people. These women that I am talking about are the women of Third Estate. Most of the women did not have the privilege to get education or job training. They belonged to lower class of Third Estate. But the daughters of nobles or wealthier members of the prosperous people of Third Estate could get education. And even after working in the same job, women would receive less pay than men. So with the ongoing problems to combat the situation, women also raised their voice and formed many political clubs and started their own newspapers. Among various political clubs, the Society of Revolutionary and Republican Women was the most famous. And one of their main demands was that women also should get the same political rights as men. If you remember, in the Constitution of 1791, women were classified under passive citizens who did not have the right to vote. This really disappointed them. So, they demanded the right to vote, to be elected to the assembly and also to hold political office. Because of their effort for recognition, the revolutionary government did introduce laws to improve the lives of women. They made a law that schooling was compulsory for all girls. Marriage contract was made where women could not be forced to marry until she wants to. Also, divorce was made legal and could be applied for by both women and men. And women could also get job training. But still, women had to continue their struggle for equal political rights as it was not taken into consideration in the laws introduced. There was not all. During the reign of terror under the leadership of Maximilian Robespierre, the government banned women's club and any other political activities that they carried out. As Robespierre was very strict to those who went against him, under his order, many women were arrested and executed. They were guillotined. When such prominent leader and one of the most important politically active women in revolutionary France was Olympe de Gog, given in the source C. You can see her picture right here. In 1791, she wrote a declaration of the rights of women and citizens. In source F, you will see what points have been said by her in the declaration. 
The fight for political right by women continued for many years. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the fight for vote was carried out through an international suffrage mo movement. The word suffrage means right to vote. After fighting for many years, that is around 200 years, it was finally in 1946 that women in France won the right to vote. Moving on to our next section, the abolition of slavery, we will look when it was abolished. One of the most revolutionary social reforms, reforms of the Jacobin regime was the abolition of slavery in the French colonies. What is colony? When a country is under the control of another country, for example, take India. Before independence, India was under the rule of British. That is, India was said to be a colony of British. Likewise, the French colonies in the Caribbean, that is Martinique, Guadeloupe, and San Domingo. These French colonies were important suppliers of commodities such as tobacco, indigo, sugar, and coffee. Europeans had a shortage of labor in plantation. They needed more labor. In order to meet their need for labor, they indulged in slave trade. Slave trade began in 17th century. Slaves were bought from Africa by Europe and also it was traded to their colonies in America. It was a triangular slave trade between Europe, Africa and America. French merchants would sail from the ports of the Bordeaux city or Nantes to the African coast. Poor slaves were packed tightly into ships for three months and were sailed across Atlantic to the Caribbean. There, they were sold to the plantation owners. After having slave labor, the production capacity increased and the demand was fulfilled in European market. The demand for sugar, coffee and indigo. And also slave trade was highly flourishing in port cities like Bordeaux and Nantes. It continued for many years. It was in 18th century when Third Estate held its position in lawmaking that there was criticism of slavery in France. The National Assembly, they had a long debate on this but did not come to any solution. It was in 1794 during Jacobin's regime when there was new convention, slavery was abolished. But it did not last long. After 10 years, during the rise of Napoleon, he reintroduced slavery. Plantation owners also wanted slaves to increase their business and for better economy. It was only in the year 1848 that slavery was finally abolished in French colonies. Now let's come to our final section, the revolution and everyday life. How did the revolution in France affect in everyday life of people? There are some points which you need to know. First, liberty and equality. The revolutionary government passed laws on liberty and equality in politics, which definitely reflected in everyday life of people. Second was abolition of censorship. In the old regime, that is before 1789, all written materials and cultural activities, books, newspapers, plays, could be published or performed only after they had been approved by the censors of the king. It was after the storming of Bastille in 1789 censorship was abolished. Third is the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen proclaimed freedom of speech and expression to be a natural right. People had freedom to have opinions and views and express it openly. Fourth, freedom of the press. There was right to report news without any censorship through the medium of print or any other means. 
Apart from these, the newspapers, pamphlets, books, and printed pictures flooded the town of France. It was also spread on the countryside. There was plays, songs, and festive processions, which was a result or the ideas that indicated liberty or justice that was seen in the people. Altogether, if you see, it was a complete changed version of life before monarchy. Now, in the conclusion, let us go brief into Napoleon Bonaparte. How did Napoleon come into power in France? We have already discussed this in the previous class. The political instability of directory rule of France paved a way for Napoleon to conquer France and rule. He was a military dictator. In 1804, 1804, Napoleon Bonaparte crowned himself Emperor of France. He conquered neighboring European countries. And after winning the battle, he would place the member of the family in that region and continue to conquer other countries. During his rule, he introduced many laws such as protection of private property and a uniform system of weights and measures provided by the decimal system. And also many more reforms were introduced. In the initial days, people saw Napoleon was bringing good changes and that he would bring freedom for the people. He was considered as liberator and modernizer. But soon the Napoleonic armies came to be viewed everywhere as an invading force. Many common people would be forced to join the army. And to maintain the military, also the tax was increased. You will learn more about this in higher classes. And it was in the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Napoleon was finally defeated. So students, we have seen how French Revolution brought many changes in France. The ideas of liberty and democratic rights were the most important legacy of the French Revolution. Not only in France, but these ideas had spread from France to the rest of the Europe during the 19th century and to the rest of the world as well. Therefore, it is a landmark of introducing the idea of nation-state and to be governed democratically. So this is the end of the first chapter, the French Revolution. I hope you have understood. Here we will end today's class. Thank you.